Hi, my name is Julie Mello, and I'm an S-Box monitor for the California Bluebird Recovery Program. Bluebirds are our iconic species. There are three species of bluebirds, including western bluebirds, mountain bluebirds, and eastern bluebirds. These are secondary cavity nesting birds, making nests in holes in trees. Those holes are getting harder to come by. California is the home to both western bluebirds and mountain bluebirds. The range of the western bluebird is over much of California, whereas the mountain bluebird can be found at higher elevations. Although their ranges contracted decades ago because of loss of habitat, in competition with invasive, non-native birds, nest box programs are helping the bluebird make a comeback. Humans have been removing the trees cavity nesting birds depend on. Nest boxes can help these birds who can't find natural cavities to raise their young. There are five elements that will help you become a successful bluebird landlord. You must have the right habitat, a good nest box, the proper location for that nest box, set up predator guards to make your nest box difficult for predators, and a willingness to monitor your nest box and keep data. The habitat of both the western and mountain bluebird is grassland and open woodland. For bluebirds to raise young, there must be enough area for the parent birds to hunt nearby. This could be an acre or more of grassland. You don't have to have an acre of land in your backyard, but a schoolyard or other grassy area nearby can provide plenty of opportunities to hunt for food. Perching opportunities help bluebirds watch for prey. Bluebirds can also be found in parks, golf courses, farmland, open subdivisions, cemeteries, and other open spaces and increasingly backyard neighborhood gardens with appropriate habitat. Bluebirds typically catch ground-dwelling insects such as grasshoppers, caterpillars, beetles, ants, wasps, and pill bugs, as well as eating spiders and snails. They also can eat a variety of berries. A properly designed and built nest box is important. Wood that is at least three-quarter inch can better help young birds whether extreme hot or cold weather. Recycled redwood fencing material can make good nest boxes. Use wood screws if possible rather than nails. Sturdier boxes will last longer and be less prone to destruction by raccoons. Ventilation openings are a good idea. Entrance hole diameter should be one and a half inches. An entrance hole for mountain bluebirds should be one and nine sixteenth inches, just a tiny bit bigger. A larger hole lets in predators, so make the hole no larger than necessary. You should be able to open the nest box to keep track of goings on and clean out the box when necessary. You can get nest boxes from bird feeding specialty stores, online, or make them yourself. Be sure and look at them closely to be sure they are durable and meet the standards of a good nest box. Nest boxes should be located out in open near short grass. They should be away from barns, sheds, and activity. Remember that the parents will want to return often and they will hesitate to enter when people are nearby. Place the box away from dense cover that might conceal predators. Various methods of mounting your box are available including mounting on a pole or hanging in a tree. Placing your box on a tree fence or side of a building can make it easier for predators. The entrance hole should be about five feet off the ground. Cats, squirrels, snakes, raccoons, and predatory birds are all challenges bluebirds must face. To help them stay safe, use some of these predator guards. Stovepipe baffle, knoll guard, wood guard. Monitoring nest boxes weekly is important to nest box success. You will know if predation or other problems are happening allowing you to identify the problem and respond. It will also allow you to see which boxes are successful and which might need to be moved for better access for the birds. Gathering nesting data allows you to keep a week-to-week -week view of the cycle of each nest. As you approach each box, you can refer to your notes and know what to expect. If disaster has struck, you will have a good idea what has happened and how to react. 
House sparrows have been a problem for bluebirds since their introduction in the early 1900s. Another use of weekly monitoring is to catch house sparrows in the act of taking over a nest box and usurping it from our native birds. Bluebirds are quite beneficial to us humans. As we rely on more and more chemicals to keep us safe from insects, we fill our land, air, and water with pesticides. Those pesticides are not innocuous to humans. We are better off relying on natural predators to deal with insect pests, and bluebirds are a native biological control for pests in your lawn. But bluebirds have been fighting a problem for decades now. Those trees they depend on for nesting are removed to prevent them from falling on people, cars, or houses. Nest boxes aren't a perfect substitute for natural cavities, but they are better than nothing. But there is more you can do to help the western bluebird. If you see bluebirds or other cavity nesting birds around your house or the park or open space nearby, see if you can install a nest box for them. The California Bluebird Recovery Program is here to answer questions for you if you want to know more. And avoid using pesticides whenever possible. Many lawn care companies use a preventative method of spraying pesticides. They use them whether they see insect problems or not. That means they may be using chemicals on your lawn that they don't need to. When bluebirds do try and help, they often find themselves feeding insects covered in poisons to their young. When that happens, the entire nest full of young bluebirds will die. Habitat is important to any animal, and bluebirds are no different. But humans are destroying habitat at an alarming rate. Be a champion of local wildlife habitat. Speak up when you see habitat being destroyed. And when possible, restore natural habitat in your yard or go to a nearby park and ask if you can plant a native plant island or put up nest boxes. Native plants are important to local butterflies, bees, and other pollinators, as well as bluebirds and other native avian species. Planting even one good native plant in your yard like a toyon can help local wildlife. And when you see that one plant teeming with life, we hope you get inspired to do more. Grassland free of pesticides is important to bluebirds. You can take some of your lawn and make it into wildlife habitat, but even lawn can be useful to bluebirds if it is not covered in pesticide. And finally, Keep in mind that a host of other local birds also nest in cavities. They are suffering from a loss of habitat every bit as much as the western bluebird. Please visit cbrp.org for more information on how you can help your local birds.